It's really convenient to just pee whenever you want to in a diaper. It is a complete mindset change for a kid to say, oh, I can't go whenever I want to, but there are ways to make it easier. Keep watching to find out what books we read to help potty train our toddler. Hey, it's Kyla Denagno and you're watching Kyla's Reading Day special edition because we are reviewing toddler books that are all about potty training and using the potty, okay? So potty training is what Americans say when they are teaching their kid to stop using a diaper and start using a toilet. Potty, I guess, is just a cute little phrase. Kids are able to pronounce it. Potty training, I wanna go potty, whatever. So we're gonna go through books that we read to the little one to get them ready for potty training, okay? And then one book that I read as a parent to prepare me and my husband for potty training. So the first one is a book that we actually own. We bought this back when she was 18 months old because I was ready for her to potty train. I was like, you know what? Diapers are done, let's go. Well, she understood what a diaper was, but I don't think she was ready. And I think it would have been a lot more difficult for us. And that was something, again, that we credit to the Actively Family video, which is where they say, your kid has to acknowledge the things you're saying for them to do it. Yeah, she knew words and she understood things at 18 months. But if we asked her, tell me when you gotta go potty, that didn't mean anything to her. So whether or not she understood it, she loves the sounds, right? So there's a little song that goes along with it. There's the sound of a toilet flushing and then there's washing your hands. So this book is really cute because it talks about, hey, we're going to different places. We're going to school. We're going to the music store. Every place has potties. So if you need to go, there's one for you anywhere. So then Potty by Leslie Patricelli is a really cute book and she loved to read this book, okay? So I'm gonna show you one of her favorite pages, which was this one where the kid is squirming and wiggling because they gotta go. <laughs> She really resonated with this. Like she's old enough that she recognizes facial expressions and angry and happy and whatever. And I'm sure she's looking at it like, oh yeah, I felt like that, right? So this one was a really fun read and she really enjoyed it. So I wasn't sure about this one. I used the potty by Maria Van Lesult. And sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. And so this book was great because it talks a lot about pooping. And so potty training the first day it happened um, wasn't nearly as messy, but that's because I was listening to an audiobook and I was like, okay, tell me when you gotta go potty, tell me when you gotta go potty. I, I wasn't, I had forgotten how much I needed to pay attention for her to have to go, right? We were increasing the fluids, let's go, let's do it, sure. Um, by day two, that was when she really realized, oh, I'm going and or her body was sufficiently hydrated from the day before. But the second day was tough, but also she got that poop. So it was nice that she got to see that in a book, acknowledge it, look at it, right? Because so pooping is difficult if you've never done it before in a toilet. And I know that sounds so weird. You're watching this video, you've probably been pooping in a toilet forever, but it's really convenient to just pee whenever you want to in a diaper. It is a complete mindset change for a kid to say, oh, I can't go whenever I want to. It's a complete difference, okay? And so this next book really helped with that. And that book is A Potty For Me by Karen Katz, okay? But this one is good because it shows accidents. So the first day we got away with pants and a top, but also I think the first day was so difficult because she couldn't really tell when she was wet in the pants, right? Her underwear was absorbing it, the pants were absorbing it, and then we'd be like, hey, can you tell you're wet? And she's kind of like, she probably mostly just felt warm. So she wasn't getting it in the pants. And I was like, what can we do for the next day? A skirt, I'll put you in a skirt. I'm gonna put this picture up here. Only my kiddo would say, well, now that I'm in a skirt, I gotta wear shoes. And if I'm gonna wear shoes, I gotta wear socks. This is why the second day was so difficult in my household. This is what she was wearing. This is a whole outfit, which means every time she would pee, we would run her to the potty. She'd probably have urine on her skirt. Wouldn't wanna take it off. So we were constantly changing her clothes. She wore three different tutus that day and more than five different socks. Also went through about 20 undies because she did not like being wet. Once she realized, oh, that's what's happening, <laughs> she was telling us, either she was screaming potty and run into the bathroom, or she would realize she was going, right? Like I had to learn her cues. But then she, I don't care if it was two drops, she did not wanna be wet. But she was in a whole outfit. 
And so this book was really good for showing accidents happen. You know, now for my kid, the wet pants didn't work, but the accidents when she was wearing the skirt and she could actually feel it, then she was like, oh, okay, no, this is not gonna work. The next book here is a fun one because the kiddo loves Sesame Street and she really likes Elmo and she still really likes flip books. So this one was fun because it shows Elmo at a friend's house, but it kind of looks like a school and it shows the kid getting changed. And then it eventually shows them like, oh, I think I have to go. So this one doesn't have all the lessons that the other books have, but it was still just a good one because we were trying to get her to acknowledge that everyone potties even fictional monsters on Sesame Street. Everyone potties, okay? So the very last one here, which was really important for our family, Time to Use the Potty by Fiona Monroe, was really, really, really cute for my kiddo, okay? For one, the characters in the book are brown. It's always nice to have some representation. But also, both of the characters, the little girl and her brother, have favorite dolls and stuffed animals, and they try to make them sit on the potty. So my little girl has a stuffed lamb that she absolutely loves and carries with her everywhere. We didn't do this where we were like, oh look, my mind has to go potty as well. But when we're reading this and they're like, oh, let me try to get the stuffed bear to try to go use the bathroom. Oh, let me try to get the stuffed bear to wear its undies. That I think really resonated with her because she's like, yeah, potty, potty. If I potty, my mind can potty, everybody potties. So I really like to see this. This was a really good book because the scariest thing about potty training is that you have to get your kid to acknowledge that everyone goes, right? She calls it make yellow. So we get up in the morning and she goes to the bathroom and she goes make yellow, I made yellow. But then also even when she had to go poop, we had to make sure we said, oh look, your body works. We were very careful to not say yucky or oh it smells. And I think one time she said yucky yucky and we were like no, your body works. Look, your body works. So that she can get used to the smells of being in the bathroom, the looks of being in the bathroom, right? I don't want her to have shame about oh no this thing is happening because you're gonna eat food and it's gonna come out. <laughs> so we gotta get you to acknowledge that, all right? So in addition to those books that we were reading, we are still reading some just fun books from the library and we are still enforcing food and fruits and eating. <laughs> so Fruits with Suits is really cute. It talks about how fruits wear all kinds of different suits. They wear swimsuits. They wear suits when they're going to work. They wear bathing suits. Well, bathing suit is a swimsuit. And then lastly, and this one was a surprise for us, Pigeon Finds a Hot Dog. And the best thing about this is that in the back of the book, the pigeon shares the hot dog. So this one is still getting the kiddo to try her food, try foods that might be on my plate, try some veggies, because food has water in it that makes you have to urinate, food has fiber in it that makes you need to go. So you need to eat food in order to use the potty. So we definitely had to kick that up. Now last summer we started saying, okay, you're wearing a diaper. Do you realize this? Oh, are you wet? Those kind of things. And then once she got into daycare in September, she definitely started going to the teachers and telling them diaper, 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 which was her way of saying wet or give me another diaper, right? But then once we really knew it was time for her to be potty trained was in November, all of the reports we would receive from daycare, they would change her maybe five times in the eight hours she'd be there and three of the diapers were dry. So I don't believe that they were truly dry, like they weren't pressing their hand to check, but the diapers weren't wet enough to indicate the wet line on them. And I'm like, okay, we're just wasting money by sending her in diapers. So that was why we wanted to potty train her for Thanksgiving break, but we did save it until Christmas break when we knew we were gonna have eight days with her by herself, okay? So we watched that one, the three day method actually worked, but I'm also happy that we read this book, The First Time Parents Guide for Potty Training. So this book really helped to prepare us because as you're potty training your kid, you need to make sure that they are drinking a lot more fluids than usual, right? My daughter loves to have some chocolate milk, she enjoys water, she enjoys fruit smoothies, but you gotta kick that up for potty training because you need their bladder to always be full so that they can always get those cues and those triggers, oh, I have to go. And so we've always been making smoothies, but we definitely heighten those. And then when we had leftover smoothie, we turned them into popsicles so that she could just walk around all day eating those. We also bought some just regular generic brand, you know, orange, purple, and red popsicles that she could walk around snacking on because the kiddo got tired of drinking, right? Here's some orange juice, here's some water, here, oh look, she got tired of it. And another good thing in this book is it recommends salty foods for your kid to eat. So, 
it's a common thing when you go to a bar that they have peanuts there or pretzels so that you're eating and then you want to drink. And it's the same for potty training, <laughs> not the beer. But we were offering her pretzels. We were offering her goldfish crackers, right? All of these things that'll make your kid go thirsty. And then they start drinking even more and then they constantly are getting those cues, okay? There was another important thing here which was talking about naked days. So we considered that. I was like, great, we can have a naked day. She can run around, just be messy, we'll clean that up. Well, that doesn't fit our family. And my daughter taught me that <laughs> because she's used to getting up, getting dressed, going on with her day. So the idea of we're gonna put a t-shirt on you and no bottoms, she wasn't having that. The idea of, okay, we're not gonna put on pants, we'll just put on your undies, she wasn't having that either, okay? So she had to teach us Everything you read in the book is cute, but it's not gonna work for me. And that was perfectly fine, right? The point of this book is just that you have to prepare yourself for what potty training is like because it is messy and it is tough and it is dirty, like literally dirty. And if you are not mentally prepared, you will be fussing at your kid. You will be yelling at them. Why'd you have an accident? Why can't you just go in the potty? But that's not gonna make them go, okay? So we did watch this video, which was called The Three Day Potty Training Method, which was by Actively Family. I'll make sure I put that link in the show notes. That video was absolutely great. But there was one thing about the video that we made sure that we did not do, and that was just a personal preference for us and our family. And that's because my daughter does not like candy. So we bought a little potty chart back when we thought we were gonna potty train her when she was 18 months old we lost it. And so we were like, okay, well, that's not gonna work. And then we knew we couldn't use the candy as the motivation. So we were like, okay, we can't do that. So but one of the things we learned from this book was that you could just use support and acknowledgement of the goals that your kid was reaching to support them and encourage them. So if Madison went poop in the potty, we would call her grandma and we would let her say, oh my God, I'm so proud of you, you're such a big girl. Or when she would have no accidents all day, we would call her aunt and we would be like, hey, guess what? I didn't have any accidents. And they, she would get to feel that love and praise over the phone. And another perk to that was that then we didn't have to break her from always wanting a treat whenever she went potty. But yeah, so this book was really, really important and good to get us prepared for potty training because it's very difficult. You're constantly paying attention to them to be like, are they squirming? Do they gotta go? Are they making a little face to say, oh, I gotta go, right? Like it does take time. It does take time, but you can do it. We did it in three days. And we also spent about a month reading books to get prepared and get prepped for what is going potty, okay? So thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the book suggestions. Let me know if you potty trained a kid and how that worked out for you, all right? And I will talk to you next time on Kyla's Reading Day. <laughs> Bye.